the, the go out here to do house lights? Yeah, so, well, th okay, so this is like the utility room that has the actual dimmer pack. And we're, we're also storing things in here that probably, probably wouldn't want the uh, fire, fire marshal or whoever to see because it's like kind of a hazard. Welcome back to Rock Harbor Church in this series that we're doing that's kind of a worship tech makeover for this space. In this video, we're going to talk about lighting. We have not touched the lighting system in this older church building. Uh, we've got some very old house lights and some stage lights. I can't wait to show Craig how it's currently all being run because it's, uh, it's interesting uh, to say the least. And I thought it'd be cool that since he could be here on site with us today to actually kind of share with us his thought process of how he would tackle a space like this. Um, so I think it'd be fun to kind of go through the four steps of church lighting design. Let's talk about front lighting solutions, back lighting or kick lights, atmospheric lights, as well as you know wall washes and things like that um, that we can do to, to improve the lighting situation in this room. Yeah, let's do it. So coming into a room like this, I look at how beautiful the room is. This is a great space and we don't want to hide anything. It has beautiful ceilings. It has beautiful stained glass. First thing I'm looking at is rigging location for our front wash. Front wash is the first priority before anything else. And then we need to position that in the right place. A lot of times we'll walk into churches and in, in rooms like this where the ceiling is very high, the easiest place to put it is right on the back wall. And why that isn't the best place to put your lights is because one, when someone is on stage preaching to the congregation or leading worship, those lights are right in their eyes. They're getting blinded. They really can't see anybody out here. Also that low, um, low height position washes out screens. It hits the back wall. So we want to get those lights up. So coming into the space, first time seeing this, I've only been in here for a few minutes and I've already picked out where lighting should be hung. So working with the building, there's an existing wood beam at the rear of the room. Um, it's, not a, it's not a very deep sanctuary. So that positioning at the, weir, at the rear of the room works well because it's gonna hide our equipment. Also, it gives us a structurally sound position to hang our lights, which is safe um, and it is part of the structure. So our 45 degree angle is what I'm looking at and that puts us at the back beam. So that's where we would start with our primary front wash. And then seeing how deep this stage is, we will add a second line of front wash to the next beam out to help fill this. We could add all the lights to that back beam, but if we're in here doing the work, we wanna do it right, we wanna do it once, and we would then do the two locations. The only difference in the install process is gonna be a little extra cable and a little bit more time spent moving our lift. I would put this, this depth of area we need to light into three zones. I would call this area down here the altar area, which would get its dedicated set of fixtures. This area where the pulpit would be and maybe some of the um, worship lead and singers up here. This would be our second zone. And our third zone is gonna be back here, keys, guitars, drums. This is where they're gonna live. So this would be that third area of light. So we have first, First zone, second zone, and third zone, and that's how we would allocate fixtures. So as far as fixture choice, an ellipsoidal has built-in shutters where you can create a very specific shutter down light area that will be off screens, be off specific areas of the wall. So an ellipsoidal fixture would give you the most control. A Fresnel fixture will allow you to still shape the beam and create a larger beam or smaller beam, and then your shuttering would happen with the barn doors. In a situation like this where we have somewhat decent amount of ambient light spilling in from the stained glass windows, a Fresnel fixture would be my first choice because in a situation like this, we just wanna wash the stage well and it's still, a Fresnel will give us that that fixture and that beam control with the barn doors and sizing it. So the Fresnel would be my choice in this. Um, if we needed to really hone in and get very specific um, on a certain area of the uh, stage, then an, ellip or an ellipsoidal would be a better choice. But for this room, seeing the stained glass, a Fresnel would be my first choice. For the front area here, the altar, because of how far that beam is from the stage and the ceiling height, the ceiling height plays the biggest factor in this room, we could get away with two fixtures to light the full width 
I would do three fixtures, um, essentially a left, center, right, to wash that front altar area. For the pulpit position, I would increase that to four fixtures, and we would be doing a cross aim to eliminate as much shadow as possible. So with a cross aim technique, a light is gonna be hitting this side of my face, another light is gonna be hitting this side of the face, therefore filling in the gaps. So four fixtures for the pulpit, and then same for the zone three, the back, the back line area, another four fixtures. As far as hair light goes, again, we, I look at the structure that's available to us. The last thing you wanna do in a room like this is drop truss in and add stuff you just don't need. Work with the architecture, work, work with the building. There's a beam right here um, that's just in front of that wall. That is gonna be an excellent location to hang our hair light fixtures. The ceiling height is working in our favor because it's gonna give us a nice big spread of light. We could get away with four fixtures on the back line. If we just wanted a little bit more punch, we could do six, six fixtures. So if you wanted moving heads in here, the Zoom Pro 7 or the Zoom Pro 12 would be an excellent fixture choice to allow for movement if it was desired during worship or if you just wanted to have different positions. Zoom Pro 7, Zoom Pro 12 would be a great fixture. If you didn't need movement in that space, the Pro Kick would be the fixture of choice. It allows you color changing and color mixing ability as well as um, just to have white. So as a kick light position, we advise that you have that color mixing ability so you can um, just mix a different color temperature here than what's um, a part of the front light just to create a little bit more interesting lighting element. And I wanna to emphasize to folks like it's the really the most important thing is good front lights uh, and, a, and a good backlight or a kick light. Like that's like the foundation of, of great lighting design. Then we could start to think about the atmospheric um, effects, effect lighting. And in a church like this, I think there's a couple different directions we can go. Like I'd be happy and pretty happy with just like some great front washes and some back lights and like, okay, let's just call it done from there. Especially in a traditional architecture space, we already have stained glass. Technically the stained glass, like that is an atmospheric lighting effect yes. in itself. Yes. And like, I personally don't feel like we need to pull away from it that much. Visually, we're gonna have the two screens uh, beside the stained glass. The greenish fabric you see where that old screen is, that's gonna be painted kind of like a darker gray color. Um, I hope that's gonna help the screen just pop a lot. Also kind of help the stained glass really pop and be nice and vibrant. The other thing that we have to think about, again, that's gonna change, is these sections of wall right here, like, like behind the drums. I think we're, we're gonna have some sort of like, kind of like a stone facade uh, right here. Of, it's gonna be kind of a dark gray stone color. The church is called Rock Harbor, so I think they want to have like that rock or kind of stone look somewhere in here. Um, and again, this is going to stay open. We're going to see all the stained glass. It's just going to be nice and simple on the stage and it's clean. So I don't know, Craig, what ideas you have because, of course, we could throw light on the stone or on the walls. But at the same time, I'm like, meh, I don't, I don't really know if we need that much wall wash or anything like that. Or we could get, we could get a wall wash fixture like some of your pro bars, have them here, and just see how we like it. Yeah, exactly. With fixtures on the floor and looking at wall elements, those are the easiest areas to add light because there's not rigging involved, where those could easily be just looked at once the primary infrastructure's in, your front wash, your kick light, and that's gonna be the, the hardest part about this job because of ceiling height and the rigging that needs to be done for those fixtures, where this is an easy test where one light sample can just be put up and, and you can see the difference is gonna make and if it's something the church wants to move forward with, or they they, they may just really want nice light and the front wash will just provide that and no light will even be needed on this back wall. Just because there is a back wall doesn't mean, mean it needs to be lit. There's a lot of ambient light coming in from the stained glass and um, once the rock's up, we'll see what it looks like. The other thing to think about is haze in this room. I would be interested in getting some Zoom Pro 7s uh, for our kick lighting and also to have some of the moving, kind of like the subtle moving light effect coming from behind the band on the stage during worship. I think that could look really cool. And then if we actually get a hazer, we'll be able to see the beams a little bit better. And it'd be interesting too to see what happens like to, uh, to the, the light coming in through the stained glass if you actually had a little bit of haze in here. Yeah, let's talk about house lights. That's kind of a whole other beast we'll have to tackle here. Um, these house lights, I'll show you in a moment here the dimming system they're currently on, but we've got house lights, 
and we've got sconces, they're all in the same dimmer system. Go out here to do house lights? Yeah, so well, th okay, so this is like the utility room that has the actual dimmer pack, and we're, we're also storing things in here that probably probably wouldn't want the uh, fire, fire marshal or whoever to see because it's like kind of a hazard. Down there, see that? This, yes, it's this thing right here. That is our current programmable thing where each row of faders is like a different scene we can program. So and that's it. Like with then, then, then out there in the in the lobby, there's a panel that can choose between those those scenes. And there's all sorts of crazy stuff going on, but you guys can see how old school these panels are. So I'm not even sure what's going on. Speechless. Speechless. <laughs> <laughs> One, we need to simplify and make sure there's just an easier way instead of coming into a closet outside of the auditorium to make those adjustments or settings. So we would look at relocating the primary dimmer to another location, leveraging the power that's already there. That's the biggest cost with house lights is if new power needs to be ran, the costs just start to go up very quickly. So we want to reutilize what's already there and just integrate a more current dimming system. So coming into this, seeing this for the first time, the first thing we would do is one, just figure out where's this going, what sub panel is feeding these dimmers and seeing if we could just utilize what's here. It's working right now. So we would, we would want to leverage it because to replace all of this, would be way too costly, especially at this phase. So let's work with what's here, but integrate some new equipment so they can have DMX control of their house lights, mm -hmm. as well as just easier way to maintain and, and manage that system. Coming into the room, I see like there's two chandeliers up there. Yeah. Those would go away. The two fixtures right over the stage can be removed. Mm -hmm. It's gonna open the area more. It's going to allow for our kick light to um, shine through as well and also get out of the way for the screen. So a lot of times older auditoriums, sanctuaries like this will have lights hanging right above the stage. Those can easily be removed. So here's our makeshift tech booth back here. We've got our pro presenter station, live streaming, and then audio. Very shortly, this is gonna be kind of like redone. Uh, we're not really switching out many computers yet, but it's gonna look a lot better. So we have a Mac back here. I'm just thinking we actually end up running Lightkey on that same Mac. It's a brand new M2 Mac Mini, plenty of power, runs ProPresenter. The other thing too, I liked like what we saw at another church, we were just at Oceans Unite, was the Akai MIDI controller that you, that you guys had hooked up for them and, and got that working. Um, so I plan on that, but any other thoughts like, other than light key with a MIDI controller in terms of DMX control in this space. Keeping it simple is important. Uh, we don't need to have a system that's so overly complex because we need to look at the, the, the worship style and the service style and um, also who's operating, volunteers. They just need to be able to jump in the seat, be able to bring lights up and maybe just change a couple cues. So light key, Great choice for this room, the Akai MIDI board with some faders and some quick uh, quick press buttons, perfect for the room. Outside of that, I mean, th that's all you need in this space. The only other thing I'd recommend would be a wall panel. Um, someone coming into the room that just needs to quickly bring up lights and they don't wanna touch the computer or the light key machine or maybe they don't know how, they can simply press the wall panel and bring up presets, whether they be just house lights or house lights plus stage or maybe some color, that can all be done from the wall at the entrance of the room. Yeah, I can say from like a style design standpoint, we're not gonna do a lot of flashy lighting design just because again, we have all the ambient light, we've got the stained glass. Um, really, it's gonna be simple cues. We'd like to automate our cues with either ProPresenter or we're gonna be using playback for our tracks, uh, which has MIDI output on it. It's actually already cueing ProPresenter. So there's so many different ways we can do that, but you know, making sure we have a DMX control software that's easy to use for volunteers, easy to set up for any staff members or volunteers has MIDI connections that it can, it can make with these other applications, that's, that's important to us. So that's why Lightkey kind of checks all of those boxes uh, for this space. Okay, so now that you have a good idea of space and kind of some of the design elements that you'd implement here, what's, what's next? What, 
what's the next step that the church needs to take to make this stuff happen? Yeah, so next, next big steps for getting things in motion is one, getting sign off and blessing on leadership here. Once they're thumbs up and going, it is getting electrical in the place. So right now there is no electrical in those positions that we talked about earlier, the front wash or the backlight position. So getting electrical into those positions is the first big task that needs to be done. Once electrical is in place, it's time to start installing rigging and data. So we would make our cable runs for our DMX system. And in a room like this, we, we want to think for the future. And in any DMX system, we want to think for the future. Even though DMX, you could take the output from your light key machine and daisy chain all of your fixtures in the whole space and terminate it somewhere on your stage as one big line. We wouldn't want to do that in any scenario because one, it's too many points of failure. We want to build a robust DMX system that we can isolate things if there's issues we're experiencing. Um, so we want to incorporate a DMX distributor. So in this system, we would do a four branch where we have um, four primary outputs splitting off to different areas of the room. So running those cables um, comes right after electrical and then installing that rigging. So once fixture choice is selected and the quantity of fixtures, then we need to go into a quick amp calculation where we, where we come up with a total draw of the fixtures. And then we also need to look at down the road, making sure there's extra bandwidth that we can add additional fixtures down the road mm -hmm. so that we can expand the system. Um, and and based on those calculations, the electrician would go ahead and insert the right breakers and circuits into the room um, for those fixtures to then plug into. In this scenario, Pro Church Lights is working pretty close with us to get the plans all done and get this figured out. But like, what would that look like for other churches who uh, take advantage of your hybrid kit or stuff like that? Like, do you, do you guys just walk them through the details of here's what you need to tell your electrician and what to, needs to get done? Yeah, exactly. So with the hybrid kit, we prepare those calculations for you. We come up with a plot and a drawing that you can give right to your electrician who is going to install those circuits. It's very clear for them. They'll understand what they need to do. And we provide all of that information to you. And then the, the rigging aspect of that as well, same, same type of deal? Yeah, exactly. Once we've determined the rigging location, again, looking for that primary structure that we can attach to. Um, you want to use rated rigging hardware. We don't, we don't want to just mount it in any way whatsoever that's cheapest. We want to make sure to use the right hardware for the job so it's safe. It's important that we remember that things are over people's heads um, and that we're using the appropriate hardware as well as safeties within the space. Hanging the lights is the easiest part. The biggest time is going to be spent in running your cable and hanging and mounting your rigging. That is where the time is going to be spent in that prep work period. And in, a, in an auditorium like this, height is the biggest factor. That's what makes this install the most difficult. And renting a lift is fairly cost effective. Lifts are widely available um, at local rental houses and they would easily be able to come into this room, set up, and that's the safest and fastest way to do the install. As far as moving the pews around, these can all detach. There's pins at the bottom. They all move. You do need a few people to, to help move them around, but it's not, um, it's not impossible and it's not terribly difficult. Well, cool. I'm really excited to tackle this project. Hopefully within the next few months, you guys will be able to see this transformation happen here at the church as Rock Harbor works alongside to Pro Church Lights uh, to get the job done. But that really gives me clarity uh, hearing from you, Craig, your ideas for the space, how it's all gonna work. I can easily relay that onto the leadership here at the church and we'll be ready to move things forward. So thanks so much for your help. You're welcome. Guys, check out Pro Church Lights for more help with the lighting infrastructure at your church. They got fixtures you can buy, uh, but then they also have cool ways for, for you to install and upgrade your lighting system with that hybrid kit where their team is gonna help you remotely. They're gonna send you detailed plans of how to get the job done properly and safely. Um, and then, yeah, just don't under, underestimate how much you can do like yourself when you have the right support in place, even if they're thousands of miles away. So go check out ProChurchLights.com. Thanks for watching the video. Leave a like. We'll see you guys next time.